Mm. How would I describe thrash metal? I don't, I don't even know. It's You can't really describe it. You kind of have to go to a thrash metal show to know what it is. Thrash metal is just, you know, just kind of like a no strings attached like form of metal. Like it's basically guitar, drums, bass, vocals, stripped down to like it's very like core. You know, no flashy stuff. It's just pure aggression. <laughs> Thrash metal is basically the most pure, aggressive, energetic form of metal and I've always been big into watching crazy performances like that and thrash is the best for raw live shows and it's just the best, it's my favorite. Thrash metal is a fast variant of heavy metal. It tends to have a lot of solos um, and to stick to a fairly conventional uh, song structure. Uh, it also tends to have aggressive, if not completely growled or screamed vocals. Uh, so more sort of shouted vocals. It's not too far removed from uh, genres like heavy metal, speed metal, it, you know, the er original style of heavy metal. I started playing guitar about sixth grade, so give or take like seven, like six, seven years. So I started playing drums when I was about 11 or 12. I think I started when I was 11, so it's been about six years I've been playing. I think it was actually my cousin that got me into it. Uh, he gave me my first Metallica CD. I was watching MTV. I saw the St. Anger video uh, with Metallica and everything like that. And then I was talking to my cousin about it one day and he gave me Ride to Lightning. I'm like, fuck, fuck St. Anger, dude. I got in, after that I got into um, the Megadeth stuff and then the Slayer and all shit like that. <laughs> My influences are like a lot of progressive stuff like Dream Theater and uh, I'm really into Nevermore and Arch Enemy and things like that, kind of outside the box more so bands. I was always like interested in like the technical aspect of music and just like, just like the raw emotion that came from playing music and to me metal was just like the best like example of what it means to channel your emotion to like music and stuff.
It was just the most aggressive, the most pissed off, and I loved everything about it. As a guitar player, I would say I love like like the instrumental guitars like Joe Satriani, Jason Becker, Steve Vai influenced me a lot. Uh, Metal-wise, you know, Metallica started me off, and then from there it just grew into this whole big thing where I just like listened to pretty much everything, you know, within the metal genre. Uh, the biggest ones are like Testament, Death. Uh, you know, it just keeps going and going. Well, I started out with, like, you know, the typical rock stuff that every nine-year-old kid likes at some point, and eventually from there I grew into Metallica a lot, and I saw Cliff Burton play on a bunch of videos, and that got me into playing bass like crazy, just watching him and from there, I just kept going with other bands. Like the, the band previously formed before I actually joined, the drummer Jim had, uh, he jammed with a former guitarist and stuff, and that's, that's how like, they started the idea of Diamond Plate. And uh, from there, I remember, I think I saw Jim like online, like on MySpace or something like that, and I just sent him a message, and he remembered me from a Megadeth show, uh, and the, where we like, kind of like started talking. And then uh, we just kind of clicked from there. <laughs> Two dumb kids that wanted to play music. Um, <laughs> we just one day I called them up, we're like, "Oh, hey, you want to jam?" Yeah, sure. We played a bunch of Jimi Hendrix stuff, uh, and just evolved. We started playing Enter Sandman and things like that. Uh, and then John got involved. <laughs> Well, uh, Jim is my stepbrother, and we've lived in the same household for probably like almost 10 years. So he was jamming with our former guitarist. They're the ones who technically started the band, and they needed a bassist. Jim walked over one day, they were jamming, I was watching TV, and he walks over and asks if I wanted to play bass. I was like, I guess I'll try. And then six years later, you know, here we are. Diamond played, uh... <laughs> That was uh, just JR's dad bullshitting around one time. He was at uh, he was at this gym and he's working out. He's seen Diamond Plate on the thing. He's like, oh yeah, cool man. Like Diamond Plate, it's a pretty badass name, you know. It's pretty metal. Like, it's kind of funny, kind of a funny story, but that's really what it is. <laughs> When we had our, our former guitars vocalist, I did not do vocals, obviously. Uh, once, once we became a three-piece, we had a search for a vocalist and we didn't find anybody that we liked enough. And so I was just kind of like, screw it, I'll give it a shot. And we kept with it. First time I saw Diamond Plate was, I think it was two years ago, uh, fall of 2007, with a friend of mine. Uh, we uh, drove down to the Pearl Room in Mokina to see Overkill, and uh, we were interested in these young uh, upstarts who were going to be opening uh, opening the show. And uh, they, as it turned out, they really, really kicked ass at that show. I came out of that show with uh, a very nice diamond plate shirt and uh, their first